Our first scripture reading this morning in unison is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are teaching come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Now is the time for our children's message. Did I see Scarlet and Violet scoot in? Are you willing to come forward? Is there anybody else hidden that I don't see? I think we'll scoot down over here. Here we go. Hey, you want to sit right there? How are you this morning? I'm a big child. You're big. We're all big kids, really. There's no age limit on acting like an infant, and we all know that, right? All right, so uh, we were just reading a story about um, an older person who had a lot of questions and was trying to learn, which I think is wonderful, that we always get to keep learning and growing and asking good questions. When was the last time you, you learned something new? When does school start? September 8th. So you're going to be learning lots of new stuff pretty soon, right? Cool. Do you know the silliest thing that I just learned? It's really silly, but I was up at my, my folks' house, and they didn't have any good jelly. And I learned that if you can, and I don't like eating peanut butter just by itself, so I cut up some grapes and put it on top of it, and it was, just so you know, it was really good. It's really, really good. All right, so I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach everybody something new. All right, can you, do, can you touch your nose with one hand? And now I want you to take your other hand and do this. No, on the other side of your face. So it's a cross. Right? All right, now you're going to reset. Now with the other hand, the other hand that didn't touch the nose before, you can do this. If the adults want to try it, you can do it too. Ready? And then you reach across and with the other one. Right? And then we're going to reset. And then you're going to go back at the same time and do it again. Okay? Just keep doing it. Can... All right? How you doing? Right? It takes practice, right, to learn how to do that? Do you know, my daughter at her preschool, and this is, this is what everybody's going to learn, it takes both sides of your brain to know how to be able to do this, right? You have to engage both sides of your brain, and that doesn't make, means nothing to you, but you need both sides of your brain to do this, and my, they would do this in my daughter's preschool, and then they would go into a lesson to teach them something, and they would pick up the, the, the material faster. I was either going to do this one or... There, I was going to do this one, which I learned. This, have you seen this? Anybody ever? Tried? And then you just add, you just add your second arm, right? And then we're going to try that, right? Yeah. And this is total muscle memory. I learned how to do this as a teenager, and I'll never forget it now, right? It's good exercise, right? But it takes practice to do that, right? And but what I really like about this person that we just read about in scripture is that he's asking questions. He, he is curious about Jesus and he's, and he's trying to figure it out. 
And that's all of us, right? We've come to believe in Jesus that there's something there, right? And Nicodemus, that's what he says. There's something. I know there's something. God is with you. And then he seeks to learn more about it. And that's the journey that all of us are on every day of our lives, is trying to, to learn more and grow and, and you know, learn about Jesus. And we start practicing like we're doing like this, right? Practicing, putting things into practice, and learning that there really is something to this whole Jesus thing, this whole church thing, this whole God thing, right? You should ask your, your grandma and your mom, I ask them, you know, why, why do you follow? Or you ask, do you know what? It might terrify some people, but, you know, when we were, to ask them, but we should all be ready to say, why? And you're just, there's something to this. There's something to this. And I pray for all of us that we're learning that more and more as we get older. Will you say a prayer with me? Hold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, and I'll say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for for faith. We thank you for curiosity, for asking good questions, and for the times where we encounter you and realize, yeah, yeah, we are on the right path. Lord, we thank you for this uh, congregation that is here to remind us that we're not alone in this and that there are other people who are looking for you and following you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. For- Our second scripture lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 31. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce the things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I do a funeral, I listen to the stories of the deceased, and then I ruminate and pray about a scripture passage that I can use that will help me weave stories of the person with a message of hope and peace for those who are gathered. So this morning, I'm going to try to weave stories together. It's not a funeral, but (laughs) that might honor Donald, but in the end, point to Christ. If I made this about Donald, he would never forgive me, because we are all here to worship the living God. And everything we do, sing, pray, preach, should point to God, the triune God made known in Jesus Christ. So with that in mind... When I thought about Donald, Nicodemus came to mind. (laughs) 
Nicodemus is a Pharisee, someone who follows tradition, likes to do things decently and in order. And this, too, is Donald, seeking to do things correctly. Last week, I asked Donald, Donald, would you like to give the benediction for your last worship service? And you're all supposed to go, aw, wouldn't that be nice? He pondered for the moment. His head turned to the side. There was a hint of a grin. And then he asked, isn't that the province of the preacher? (laughs) And I said, yes, it is the preacher who normally gives the benediction. And then he said, then no, but thank you. And then he said, I am not modern. When I was in college, my roommates, we would have a quote board. And if anybody said anything spectacular, we would write it on the quote board. (laughs) This last week, I would have written, if there was a quote board out in the hall, I am not modern, Donald Dulaney, August 23rd, 2022. (laughs) And then in little tiny print underneath, I would have written, truer words, dot, dot, dot. (laughs) But what... uh, really made me think of Nicodemus was the thought, here we see modeled faith-seeking understanding. Nicodemus says, we know that you're a teacher. Notice he's representing other people. He's the brave one. We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And I'm reminded of the story of Mother Teresa she was tending the, the wounds of someone with leprosy, and a Hindu man stood over her and watched her, and he goes, I know that what you say must be true, because there's no way you could be doing what you were doing without the power of God. We know that you come from God. Donald and I were talking about David Brooks, a conservative columnist for the New York Times, who was a secular Jew who just wondered at the joy of Christians and sought to understand. He wrote the loveliest of eulogies for Frederick Buechner. He quoted Philip Yancey. Speaking of Buechner, he writes, Buechner tries to reawaken the child in people, the one who naively trusts, who will at least go and look for the magic place, who is not ashamed of not knowing the answers because he is not expected to know the answers. Faith seeking understanding. Beekner is Presbyterian, ever mindful that at our best we fall short, but we fall on humility and we flounder in, in, and rejoice at the same time in God's grace. As Presbyterians, we eschew pride, even as we may secretly look down upon people because of their trite theology that is intellectually lazy and ill-conceived. We admire people whose faith seeks understanding. To Nicodemus's confession, Jesus responds, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Now this could be taken in different ways, but I wonder if Jesus is not commending Nicodemus. Like it's God's movement in you that makes you perceive that God is at work in me. But Nicodemus doesn't understand all of this, you know, being born from above business. How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born? To which Jesus responds, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind, which could also be the breath or the spirit, blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Faith that seeks understanding acknowledges the mystery of God, who will not be controlled or put in a box. Faith that seeks understanding believes in a God who will hold our hand and yet will not be grasped or contained. The God worthy of our worship can be known but not wholly understood. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Which points to baptism. In our our tradition, we baptize as infants 
And remember, the kingdom of God requires that we become as little children who look for the magic, who ask good questions, who seek to learn how to navigate the world in faith. We baptize as infants proclaiming that this child is already forgiven for all that is yet to come. When we baptize as adults, it's a much messier business, as are all births and rebirths. We find ourselves on our knees, when we find ourselves on our knees praying for salvation, it's usually after we've made a mess of things. Dear Nicodemus, this ability to be born and reborn again and again is the magic and the mystery and the precious gift of faith. We die to ourselves over and over and over again. God is working in our lives so that we may die to childish ways and mature in faith. We are changed, we are challenged, we are humbled, we are set straight. Now, over the the last 40 years, and I only have one year's worth of stories to tell, but 40 years must be filled with highs and lows, tears, not all joyful, relationships ripped, healed and sometimes broken. This is life in faith and in community. The knowledge that we are always works in progress is hope for the world because our relationships can deepen and soften. Our hubris can be unmasked as folly and our disdain can become our delight. Donald recently told me of his experience with gospel music out at Calvin College, singing in a gospel choir. And by the way, I would pay money to see Donald sway and clap and sing, right? And I picture you with a bow tie, I'm saying. I would pay money to see that. And by the, we recently had a community funeral, and the family was mostly from Trinidad and African American, and I, and. And I told them, the music director is available. And I'm like, do not be fooled by, by the book, right? Because I'm like, this man studied at Juilliard, but he plays with soul. And, and, they were, and it was in this family, we have been so blessed throughout this. Praise God. It's wonderful. And it was. It was. So back at, at Calvin, Donald told me, Charcy, after, sing, after practicing for a little bit, took away the music and then said, lean on me, I won't let you fall. And she didn't, and he became a convert. Jesus took the playbook away from Nicodemus. Not lean on me, I won't let you fall, but look to me and find new life. We didn't read this, but John 3, if we were to continue, goes to John 3, 16 and 17, never to be used as a sledgehammer, If you say 16, please, dear Lord, in your mercy, say verse 17 with it. For God so loved the world that the only Son was given, that whoever believes in him should have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might know life through him. New life, being born again and again and again. Nicodemus' storyline does not end with this exchange. We meet him later, chapter 7, where he's reminding his colleagues about process. This is how we do things. We give people a fair trial before we judge. And later we see him at the end of Jesus' life with Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea with myrrh and aloes to dress the body before the burial. And it says he brought 100 pounds of myrrh and aloes, which is overkill, but that's Roman pounds. It's only 75 pounds an hour, right? Still overkill. And it's interpreted in, in different ways, but I would like to think that it was a visible sign of his understanding that Jesus was the Son of God, and he wanted to honor him with all that he had, and then would later come to understand that he was the Messiah. Walking with Nicodemus, we see questions seeking answers, first covert and then overt. Boldness, exuberance, faith. 
May we be inspired to understand, to ask good questions, to be teachable, to be willing to be changed, and to testify to how we have been born again and again and again. May it be so, in Jesus' name, amen.